All right, the time of 6.30 having come and gone, I will call to order the Common Council meeting of Tuesday, April 25th, 2023, and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you. Alder Conklin. Present. Alder Conklin is present. Alder Curry. Here. Alder Curry is present. Alder Duncan. Here. Alder Duncan is present. Alder Evers. Here. Alder Evers is present. Alder Field. Here. Alder Field is present. Alder Figaro Cole. Here. Figaro Cole is present. Alder, Alder Govindarajan. Here. Alder sorry, Govindarajan is present. Alder Hankton McKinney is excused. Alder Knox. Here. Alder Knox is present. Alder Latimer Burris. Here. Alder Latimer Burris is present. Alder Madison. Here. Alder Madison is present. Alder Martinez Rutherford. Here. Alder Martinez Rutherford is present. Alder Miadze. Alder Miadze is present. Alder Rummel. Present. Alder Rummel is present. And, and present. Alder Slack. <laughs> Alder Slack is present. Alder Tischler. Alder Tischler is present. Alder Revere. Here. Alder Revere is present. Alder Vitterer. Here. Alder Vitterer is present. Alder Wilhelia is excused. Alder Bennett. Pleasant. Alder Bennett is present as well. <laughs> Madam Mary McCorm. Thank you. All right. Are there any disclosures or recusals on today's agenda? Seeing none. We'll move to the presentation of the consent agenda. President Curry. All right, bear with me folks, it's long and I just realized I needed to add one. Um, but a consent agenda is moved with the recommended action listed for each agenda on the item, including public hearings, except one, items which have registrants wishing to speak, and two, items which alders have separated out for discussion debate purposes. This document lists agenda items, the recommendations different from the agenda, items for exclusion, and items introduced from the floor. For item, agenda items with recommendations different from the agenda. Item number eight, legislative file number 76698, authorizing a purchase and sale agreement between the City of Madison and Opitz Investment Corporation and Halene Properties, LLC, for the purchase of the property located at 4710 Lean Road to provide the city with parkland. Report of the Finance Committee and recommended action is to recommend to council to adopt. Agenda item nine, legislative file number 76782, substitute, authorizing a non-competitive contract with Language Line Solutions for the provision of interpretation and translation services for the city of Madison. The Finance Committee recommended action is adopt, or recommend to council to adopt. Agenda item 11, legislative file number 76990, Providing the Latino Chamber of Commerce a, 30, a grant, $35,745 for their business development initiatives, including using small business equity and recovery program funds and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to sign an agreement with the chamber for that purpose. A uh, report of the finance committee is recommend to council to adopt. Agenda item 12, legislative file number 77070, resolution authorizing a double fill of the position of Deputy Mayor 2 at the Mayor's office. The report of the Finance Committee is to, uh, recommended action is to recommend to Council to adopt. Agenda item 13, legislative file number 77139, providing Urban Community Arts Network, a $30,000 grant for Mad Lit program, using small business equity and recovery program funds, and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to sign an agreement with UCAN for that purpose. The recommended action is for the council to adopt. Agenda item 14, legislative file number 77172, a resolution authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to execute a non-competitive on-call service contract with Edo LLC for community outreach services. Recommended action is for the council to adopt. Agenda item 15, legislative file number 77188, extending the life of tax increment district number 39 for 12 months for the purposes of creation of affordable housing and improving city housing stock in the city. The recommended action is for the council to adopt. Agenda item 16, legislative file number 77191, dissolving TID number 47 of Silicon Prairie. The recommended action is for council to adopt. 
Agenda item 17, legislative file number 77194, dissolving TID number 29 and Allied Duns Marsh. The recommended action is for the council to adopt. Agenda item 18, legislative file number 77223, approving the 2023 Neighborhood Grant Program recommendations, authorizing the execution of agreements required to administer the prog program, authorizing the Planning Division Director and Finance Director to execute grant agreements on behalf of the city, and authorizing the acceptance of any grant-funded improvements to be located on city-owned lands. The recommended action is for the council to adopt. Agenda item 19, legislative file number 77233, authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to enter into contracts with local youth soccer associations for athletic field use through December 31, 2025, with the possibility of one additional one year period. The recommended action is for the council to adopt. Agenda item 20, legislative file number 77248, authorizing the city's execution of a purchase of and sale agreement between the city and McDonald's USA, LL, USA LLC for the purchase of the property located at 3709 Kinsman Boulevard to provide the city with both short and long-term options for uses compatible with the planned construction at the adjacent property of a facility to provide shelter services for men experiencing homelessness. The recommended action is for council to adopt. Agenda item 21, legislative file number 77257, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract agreement with Trapeze Software Group, Inc. to the system supply and maintenance agreement entered in, into on February 10th, 2016 to extend coverage for Transit Master and Trapeze back office software that went out of a warranty. The cost of this contract amendment will not exceed $540,000 in the Transit Utility 2023 operating budget. Recommended action is for the council to adopt. Agenda item 22, legislative file number 77264, amending the 2023 operating budget and setting the 2023 rates for the sewer utility, stormwater utility, and landfill remediation. Recommended action is for the council to adopt. 15 votes are required. Agenda item 23, legislative file number 77273, authorizing a contract between the city and Bayview Foundation, Inc. to convey up to $2 million of ARPA, fund, of ARPA funds awarded through the state of Wisconsin's Neighborhood Investment Fund Program and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a subrecipient agreement Recommended action is for a council to adopt. Agenda item 24, legislative file number 77288, authorizing the city of Madison Fire Department to accept up to $12,000 in donations for a 50th anniversary recognition event for paramedic service in the city and amending the fire department's 2023 adopted operating budget to include the funds as agency revenue and increasing supplies expense authority by the same amount. The recommended action is for council to adopt. 15 votes are required. Agenda item 25, legislative file number 76331, amending portions of section 9.23 of the Madison General Ordinance re relating to regulation of mobile home parks. The recommended action is to re-refer to Landlord and Tenant Issues Committee on May 18th, 2023, and then in front of the Common Council on June 6, 2023. Agenda items excluded by one request of alders or two due to speakers registered by 6.30 on April 25th. Legislative file, or agenda item 10, legislative file, 76854 substitute authorizing the purchase of the property located at 305 South Bedford for from Dane County for future assemblage with Brittingham Park in the fourth assembly or fourth aldermanic district. It's been removed due to registers, regis speakers registered. 
And agenda item 22, legislative file number 77264, amending the 2023 operating budget and setting the 2023 rates for the sewer utility, stormwater utility, and landfill remediation. Uh, it was requested to be pulled by Alder Rummel. There are no items to be introduced from the floor. Thank you, President Curry. Are there any other items that alders wish to have excluded from the consent agenda? Seeing none, uh, then just to recap, because that was a lot. Thank you, President Curry. Um, items 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 are all recommended to adopt and will remain on the consent agenda, uh, as are items, as is item 23. Items 20. Two, well, sorry, that one will be excluded, but we will note that it's a 15 vote item. Uh, item 25 will remain on the consent agenda, uh, but will be referred to landlord tenant. And item 24 uh, will remain on the consent agenda, but note that it requires 15 votes. Uh, we have two exclusions at this time, item 10 and item 22. Are there any other exclusions from the consent agenda? Seeing none, President Curry, a motion? Move to adopt the, adopt the consent agenda. Moved and seconded to adopt the consent agenda. Is there any objection to recording unanimous vote in favor? Seeing no objection, that vote will be recorded. And we'll go on to public comment. At this time, we have one person uh, wishing to speak. Alex Salutis of District 5 uh, wishing to speak on item 10, which is authorizing the purchase of property located at 305 South Bedford. Do we have Alex? Mayor, there is no one here by that name in attendance. All right, we have no one in the room either. Uh, so that is all of our public comment. Which then takes us to item 22. I'm sorry, that takes us to item 10. Item 10 is legister. Oh, oh, you're here. You're, you're just in time, Alex. <laughs> All right, we'll let you put your bag down and I will say still on public comment. Uh, agenda item number 10 is a substitute authorizing the purchase of property located at 305 South Bedford from Dane County for future assemblage with Brittingham Park in the 4th Aldermanic District. Wishing to speak on this item is Alex Salutos of District 5. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, uh, Alders. Um, Gallagher Tenton Awning Factory, 305 South Bedford. Well, the intentions of this resolution are good. It's physically irresponsible. The high total cost, including lost property tax revenue, just to add a small sliver of land to a corner of a very large park is a bad investment for city taxpayers. While the Finance Committee approved it, there's no evidence they considered the total physical impact, including the lost property tax revenue or income from adaptive reuse. It appears they only considered if we had funds to buy it. That's not smart. This parcel is 0 0.1252 acres. Riddingham Park is 25.8 acres, and this resolution appropriates up to 
$300,000 for the project. At $300,000, the land cost is $2.4 million an acre. This purchase removes the parcel from the tax roll permanently, resulting in a significant loss of tax revenue. Net property taxes in 22 on this parcel were 13,667. Since 99, taxes have increased an average of 3.52% a year. Assuming tax increases at the same rate over the useful life of the building, say the next 100 years, this purchase will result in a loss of $12.4 million in property tax revenue in that time. If you buy this property, creative and adaptive reuse of the building to serve park users and the public provides significantly more value than a de minimis amount of green space it adds to Brittingham Park. In addition, adaptive reuse with a profitable tenant will cover the project costs and provide cash flow to the Parks Department in perpetuity. For examples, look no further than the inspiring work done on the Garver Feed Mill, the numerous buildings in James Madison Park, including Lincoln School, Hoover's Boathouse, and the private homes there, or the Brittingham Boathouse. Adaptive reuse of the Gallagher building is far superior use of this unique resource than demolishing it, sending it to the landfill to add a negligible amount of green space to a very large park. You have about 30 seconds. Okay, two sentences. For these reasons, I do not support this purchase. It's physically irresponsible and a bad investment for taxpayers. In the alternative, I support this purchase if it is contingent on the adaptive reuse of the building. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions for our registrant? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. All right, so then we will move to item 10, which is Legistar 76858, a substitute authorizing the purchase of property located at 305 South Bedford. On item 10, a motion, Alder Curry. Move to adapt. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded to adopt. Are there questions for staff on item 10? Alder Rummel. Thank you, Mayor. And thanks for Mr. Saludas for coming. When I read the resolution, it looks like adaptive reuse could be a future outcome. Could, if somebody for, is here from Parks or Mr. Nepp is here, ah, oh, there you are. Yep. Mr. You Nepp is online. The story of what the options are. Thank you. Thank you for the question. And certainly adaptive reuse is not um, precluded from the acquisition, um, as is n normally the case when we seek to acquire additional parkland um, from the parkland uh, impact fee resource, which is the funding stream here that would lead to the acquisition and potential even demolition cost. Uh, we do so with the intent of acquiring the land. If it comes with a building, which in this case it does, we would go through an evaluative process to look at its condition, uh, cost of restoration, uh, potential alternative uses, all of those things would be uh, normal. A good example, contemporary example, I think would be the Olin Park building, now ho home to MSCR and the Parks Division. When we acquired that, we had anticipated initially a demolition would be um, the action uh, with the acquisition of the land. Uh, in this case, we have even less information because of the unique situation leading to the acquisition opportunity where we have not been in the building, we have not inspected it at all. So it's really hard to speculate on condition. Uh, I can say it was um, it was a tax foreclosure and there were there are some concerns about the condition and the upkeep on that building, uh, certainly. But yeah, it's not foreclosed and certainly any demolition process uh, that we did wish to pursue after that evaluation would have its... Um, own permitting process with it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Are there any other questions? Alder Vitiver. Um, if this property is acquired by parks, if there were, if it were potential to be, say, converted to affordable housing, is that something that could be done interdepartmentally um, or would it take other efforts from the council or others? Um, it would. It would take some uh, some efforts. I'm not the city attorney. He's sitting right there. I see him. Hi, Mike. Uh, but um, 
we cannot use the parkland acquisition fund to acquire land with the intent to do anything other than create a park. It is my understanding we could change our mind later, but in that event, there would need to be some uh, reimbursement, I guess is what I would say is the, the logical approach. Uh, but certainly the parkland acquisition fund is legally, statutorily, and through ordinance precluded from being used to acquire land to bank for non-park purposes. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Seeing none, the motion is to adopt. Is there discussion? Seeing no discussion, is there any objection to recording unanimous vote in favor? Seeing no objection, we'll record a unanimous vote in favor of item 10 and move on to item 22. Item 22 is Legistar 77264, amending the 2023 operating budget and setting the 2023 rates for the sewer utility, stormwater utility, and landfill remediation citywide. Um, on item 22, a motion, please, Alder Curry. Move to adopt. Is there a second? second. Moved and seconded to adopt. Um, I will note that this is a 15 vote item. And I believe we have a staff presentation on the um, MADCAP memo that was attached in Legistar. Um, there you are. Krishna? Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. Uh, Krishna Kumar, General Manager, Madison Water Utility. Utility. Uh, Madison Customer Assistance Program, or MADCAP for short, was officially launched on March 1st of this year. Late last year, Water Utility staff was able to obtain the approval of the state's Public Service Commission for the launch of a water affordability program as a two-year pilot. This was the first water affordability program approved by the state of Wisconsin. As many of you may know, the monthly Madison Municipal Services Bill includes monthly charges for six different city services. Water, sewer, stormwater, landfill, urban forestry, and resource recovery. Water utility manages the billing and collection services for the municipal services bill. Just because we handled the bill, it was popularly known as the water bill, kind of ignoring the other five services which are on the bill. Now we have kind of corrected that uh, terminology to call it the Madison Municipal Services Bill. Leveraging the approval of the water affordability program, the city chose to extend that same affordability program to cover the other five municipal services as well, which is very unique. Typically, I have known water utility, water affordability programs, but not for the entire gamut of city services that are on the Municipal Services Bill. In a sense, MADCAP offers a monthly credit on the Municipal Services Bill to eligible residents earning um, 30 to 50 percent of the area median income and $30 monthly credit to eligible residents earning up to uh, 30 percent of the area median income. So for the lowest group, it is $30 per month, and the next higher level, it's $20 per month. Currently, the income thresholds for receiving the $20 monthly credit is between $40,400 and $76,100. And for receiving $30 monthly credit, it is between $24,250 and $46,630. These are the two income limits currently uh, applicable. The specific income level is based on the number of people in the household. These numbers change depending on how many people are in the household. And these income levels reflect the income levels determined by the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development and are revised annually, mostly upwards. The cost of the MADCAP is recovered from the established rates for each of these six municipal services. However, the credit attributable to the urban forestry and resource recovery special charges will be funded directly from the general fund since they are special charges and not utility fees. The real challenge now is to make sure that this new program reaches all the residents who qualify for this program and they start actually benefiting from it. 
With that goal in mind, we are making concerted efforts to inform our residents about the availability of this novel affordability program. I'm glad to report that in the first month plus, we have about 99 approvals uh, reaching 99 house, uh, households. This may, be, this may be the initial excitement. Hopefully, the trend would continue. We'll try to reach all the other households who are eligible for this program. This concludes my report. I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there questions for staff on item 22? Seeing, nope, seeing none. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Seeing no discussion. Is there any objection to recording a unanimous vote in favor? Seeing no objection, we'll record that unanimous vote in favor. And thank you, Krishna, both for the presentation and for developing the program. Um, you all should know that this Krishna and I literally talked about this in his interview. Um, and he went to work immediately on figuring it out. Um, and it's very impressive that he was successful in getting this past the Public Service Commission. So it's very well done. Thank you. All right, that uh, brings us to the end of items that were excluded from the consent agenda. Are there announcements or introduction of any additional items from the floor? Uh, Alder Latimer Burris. Oh, you, you only only once. <laughs> okay, uh, Madam Mayor, um, I have a series of motions that I would like to make, and so I'm not sure which one's most appropriate, so I'll just say them, and then you can tell me what's what. So the first one, I would like to make a motion to rescind legislar number 77204, confirming the report of the mayor submitting committee appointments. Um, and or I would like to make a motion uh, to amend under the fill in the blank, uh, legislar number 77204, confirming the report of the mayor submitting alder committee appointments and or I would also uh, like to make a motion to reconsider, um, did I say that? No, I'm sorry, to uh, reconsider uh, legislative number 77204, confirming the report of the mayor submitting all their committee appointments. Although I'm not sure any of those motions are in order. Can you say a minute about what you're trying to accomplish? Sure. Um, so what I'm trying to accomplish is to um, bring back uh, <clears throat> uh, the appointments. I, I, I don't think it was equitable. Um, I know that I'm I... sorry, Alder, which appointments? The appointments to the committees. There's, we make appointments to committees on every agenda. Okay, so it's under Legislar. Let me hear it is. It's under Legislar 77204. It is the report of the mayor submitting alder committee appointments, and uh, then it goes on to uh, tell people what committees they're on. Um, that was from the last meeting on 4-18-23. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. And just FYI, we do, we have appointments on almost every agenda. Okay, so it's really, I should say, I think I said it was a notice in motion because I'm gonna bring it forth to the next meeting and I think I have to notice it. Uh, again, Alder, I'm not sure that there's any motion that's in order okay. regarding uh, aldermanic appointments because they've already taken effect, um, but we can have the city attorney um, rule on uh, this question if you'd like. Well, I actually have three of them. That's why I went through and, and bothered to look. So there's uh, three different types. Uh, again, it's the uh, motion to rescind, um, which I'm not sure that that has a uh, uh, a debate on that and it, it has to have proper notice and then the motion to reconsideration the the amount of votes that have to uh, happen uh, are lower if you have notice so I want to make sure that's properly noticed and then the third one um, that may be or may not be in order is the motion to amend fill in the blank uh, so a motion to amend is definitely not in order because the item is no longer before us um, as to a motion to reconsider, I'd turn to the city attorney or a motion, are you saying to rescind? 
We send, right? I'd and with no and with notice. So the motion first is a notice of motion or motion in motion or notice of motion so that we have proper time um, for it to come before the council with public. Okay. In, public. in either case, those notices, those motions would not be effective tonight. They'd be effective at our next meeting. That's but, right. But so I'm doing a notice in motion. But again, although I'm not sure that either is in order, and so I'll, I'll turn to the city attorney uh, for his ruling while he reads his Robert's rules. <laughs> Uh, thank you. So just uh, first a couple of the rules related to those motions. Each of them would require a second. They are debatable. Um, and they each require majority votes or 11 votes um, if they are in order. Um, as Dollar alluded to, if these motions do obtain a second and if they are in order, they would be placed on the agenda for next week's meeting to comply with the open meetings law. Um, as to whether or not they are in order, um, I think that the there, there are some actions that a motion to reconsider cannot apply to and some that a motion to rescind uh, cannot apply to. So uh, looking at Robert's rules, the uh, section 37 uh, colon nine, says it cannot apply to an affirmative vote whose provisions have been partly carried out. Um, these are the I, I, these are the appointments of Alders to committees, correct? Yes, um, uh, and including uh, my appointments, which I did not get until Tuesday, a written notice of until Tuesday, right before the city council meeting, in effect. I did get a verbal um, earlier in the day. Uh, so, um, you know, of course, there have been committees that have met since last week's meeting that alders have served on that were appointed pursuant to the mayor's appointment and the council's confirmation of those appointments. Um, ultimately, I mean, it, it's it's the mayor has the right to rule on this. My opinion it would be that um, a motion to reconsider is not in order because the provisions of that um, of that vote last week have been at least partly carried out. Others have served. The council acted tonight on a number of actions that uh, were recommended by the finance committee that met last night. Other committees met last week, so. That would be my opinion on a, a motion to reconsider. Is a motion to rescind a materially different? I was just looking at a motion to rescind. There's a um, language that says uh, it's not in order under the following circumstances, including when something has been done as a result of the vote on the main motion that is impossible to undo. Um, so it's a similar situation. It is similar. It's a little bit different language. I guess the question would be, is it impossible to undo undo the appointments? It's impossible to undo any actions that have been taken as a result of those appointments, mm -hmm. certainly. Mm -hmm. Madam Mayor, if I could just speak on this. Um, <clears throat> so it's not really about other people getting appointed or, or whatnot. It's about the process that um, uh, it didn't seem like it was equitable and transparent for all of us. Um, and uh, as you may or may not know, I've done some couple of different things to try to adjust, um, you know, my committee appointments. And what I'm concerned about is that when we do things with speed of light, um, we have alders like myself that are brand new. Um, the language for uh, that it came under. I understand that half of the council will understand the language, um, but I didn't understand that the report was going to be binding. And normally um, you would have an introduction and then you would have uh, a vote on it the next week. But in this case, and I understand that that may be legal, it came down very fast. So in plain language, some of the council was able to get their appointments early on in the weekend and then there were some of us who did not get our appointments until we have to vote on it. I'm not trying to uh, cause a ruckus, but um, 
there is a couple of committees that I cannot attend and I've reached out about it. And also uh, it's an appointment for two years uh, and I don't want it to affect my record that I don't show up or that I needed to get a favor from somebody else. And so I think it's just something that we should be able, if we're gonna come together as a whole uh, council to be able to debate and have input and not uh, be what ends up being a, told what we're going to be doing. So, Alder, I'm gonna rule both of these motions out of order, um, and I wanna speak a minute to why. Um, first, I mean, the, the why is what the city attorney said. These, these appointments have been made and confirmed. People are already serving on committees and already taking actions under these appointments. And um, you have communicated to me and to my office that there are some of, at least one of the appointments that I'm aware of that you're unable to serve. And I've communicated back to you that I'd be happy to find someone else to take that appointment. We will do that. Lila is currently out of the office. When she comes back, we are prepared to ask notice to the rest of you <laughs> um, to ask somebody to take on that appointment. And that is the process that we have gone through in the past when an alder is unable to serve for whatever reason an appointment, we find someone else to do it. We will do that in your case. I don't think there's any need to bring back all of the appointments to handle a particular scheduling situation, which you already know we're happy to accommodate. So if you have other concerns about the appointment process, all I can tell you is that um, and if Alder Verveer was here in the room, he could tell you directly and he may wish to speak on it. The amount of notice that I have given to councils about their appointments is actually longer than other administrations have. It used to be, and when I was on the council, you literally found out what you were appointed to because there was a piece of paper sitting on your desk at your first council meeting. It's also common practice for us to enact aldermanic appointments in the meetings where they're introduced. These appointments are my appointments to make and the council has two options. You can confirm them or you can refer them back to my office. If you refer them back to my office, I have the choice to, re to bring them back before the council or to change them. Usually that's not necessary, again, because alders can make a request to be removed from a committee if they need to and we will accommodate those requests if we're able to find other alders to take the appointment. In this case, if you're concerned about being marked as absent, all you have to do is tell staff that you're unable to attend and that we are working on finding a replacement and it will not be held against you. All of this could have been handled through a conversation if you had been wanting to have that conversation. So I, again, my ruling is that your motions are not in order at this time. Um, and unless you have an additional motion, um, I think we can move on. Well, I would like to uh, appeal that, and you know that I did reach out to the office and I did, take, I did follow your instructions to send an email and you know that I'm not the only person that um, this came to issue with. And also, it maybe it it's, uh, highlights the need to have a modification of an ordinance where people um, are able to have input. Um, it's something that I'm concerned about consent agenda. If we do it this way and, and everybody doesn't do their research and doesn't understand every word, which I bothered to talk to a lot of the elders and some of the staff about what does this mean? What does the mayor's report mean and whatnot? When somebody's starting out, you can have situations. So I don't think it's inappropriate for me to bring this forth, um, especially if it uh, raises awareness to uh, things going on because when I got a response from your office, as you know, I was told I have to serve on the committee and you'll see the, the office, excuse me, leadership will see if they can replace me. So I did a uh, permanent absentee for the, 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 the committee at issue, which I don't think is, is I should have to be, uh, that should be necessary, so. I'm sorry, Alder, is there a motion there? Sure, um, I can appeal it. Do motion you, to appeal uh, your ruling. Right, is there a second? So the, the motion is to appeal the ruling of the chair as to whether these the motion to reconsider is in order. Is there uh, questions? 
Alder Vitiver, is it a question? It is a question for you, Madam Mayor. Yeah. Um, I know that some of the committee meetings, con committees that I've been on in the past have occasionally changed their meeting times and dates um, with consultation among all of the um, committee members. And I'm just wondering if that's something that has been posed as a possibility in cases like this. Um, it's certainly a possibility, yes. Committees um, control their own meeting times and um, they can consider the needs of the members um, in adjusting meeting times. That's certainly something that's an option. I don't know if it's been explored in this case or not. But it's, it is always an option. Um, members of the committee can request to alter meeting times if it's not possible for them to make it. Are there other questions or discussion on the motion? Alder Latimer-Burris? Yes. Um, does anybody know if there is uh, anything, or I guess I can ask the city attorney if um, you know if there's any effect for the Wisconsin under the Wisconsin statutes where, um, say, this became unresolved and an alder missed, you know, several meetings. Uh, I'm sure that it politically it would come up for re-election that they were not available. I'm just trying to uh, make aware to the council of our decisions and our ability to get information in a timely manner and then being able to deal with it uh, appropriately. Attorney House, I'm not sure what the question is there, but you want to try? Oh, under the Wisconsin, do you know of any Wisconsin statute, if there's any statute that where we can be uh, sanctioned for not uh, going, going to a uh, uh, meeting? No, so for, for, let me ask it a different way. If in my case, uh, the mayor was not able to find a replacement and I did not go to meetings for a year and a half, what effect does that have? There isn't any statute that specifically addresses alders being unable to attend committee meetings. I mean, the, the, there is a provision in our in our ordinances um, indicating that if members of a committee or board or commission miss a certain number of meetings consecutively, the chair is to, supposed to notify the mayor. The mayor can address it in whatever the way they wish, but there isn't any state statute that uh, has any consequences for missing a committee meeting. And I can say there is precedent. We've recently received notice of um, some folks that have not been able to attend committee meetings, um, and, but the chair has made it clear that they have a good reason for that. Um, and so my office simply notes that. And um, if those folks are interested in reappointment, there's no consequence for them as long as they have a good reason that they're not able to attend. In this particular case, obviously, we will search for a replacement appointment, and uh, we obviously would not, you know, there'd be no consequence for you not being able to attend the meetings. Uh, Alder Slack. Yes, thanks, Madam Mayor. One of the parts of the question that I heard Alder Latimer Burris mention was um, the issue of equity in the decision making around this. I just want to know if there were any commitments made to alders ahead of time of other alders, did some people know of their committee assignments ahead of time or were, was anyone promised a committee assignment before everyone knew what their committee assignments were? Um, I made no commitments to any alders about their assignments. As you all know, I met with each and every one of you, um, except for Alder Harrington McKinney who declined to meet with me um, about what committees you requested. And we worked incredibly hard to balance the scheduling of the committees and to make sure that we did not assign a committee to anybody that conflicted with another committee. Um, and to make sure that everybody got at least one committee that they asked for, um, preferably more than that, and preferably as high up in their priority list as we could. Um, it's, as I think I told all of you, when I met with you, it's like a game of Tetris because there's 90 plus seats, there's 20 of you, uh, and there's all sorts of committees that conflict with each other. So we went through, I would say conservatively six iterations of the appointments um, before we finalized them and I started calling people. Um, and then uh, actually, early on in my conversations, um, there is an alder who notified me um, of, of 
a very legitimate conflict with one of the appointments. And so I went back to the drawing board to accommodate a request to not be on a committee um, and then continued to notify everybody else. Um, and then, as you all know, you were all notified in writing at the same time. Um, but honestly, this time around, the appointments were in flux right up to the last minute. And I had been intending, as I told some of you when I met with you, um, to call people the weekend before. Um, but we literally were trying to shuffle appointments to avoid conflicts until the day of. Um, and so I called people as soon as I could. Uh, but we didn't know earlier than I started making phone calls. Uh, Alder Bennett. Yes, um, I'm wondering, is a motion to appeal in order? And I have like kind of just questions about it. My, my thinking with asking that question right now is just, um, and I mean absolutely no disrespect to my colleagues. I, it's a very difficult process, you know, coming into this. However, it seems like we're not going to come to a solution tonight and it's something that we'll need to move forward with in the future so to move forward maybe meetings with the mayor's office even common council executive committee would be in order but to try to resolve this tonight doesn't seem like it's going to produce any productive actions instead just going around in circles so yeah uh, alder bennett um a motion to appeal is always in order if the chair makes a ruling um i think you are correct however that there will not be a resolution tonight uh, um Either the council will overturn my ruling and the alder will make a motion to reconsider, mm -hmm. which cannot be acted on until the next meeting, or the council will uphold my ruling and we will continue to search for someone who is willing to take the appointments in question. I see. Okay. Thank you for understanding about that process, yep. how it works. Thank you, Alder. Alder Evers. Thank you, Mayor. I will not be supporting the motion to appeal. Um, it's my experience that the uh, mayor is willing to make adjustments uh, midway through terms even. If someone f simply finds that they, they have no affinity or interest in that committee and, and states clearly to the mayor and seeks to resign from that committee, the mayor has always been accommodating in the past. That's my experience. The flexibility is part and parcel of the of of both the responsibility and the obligation to serve, but there's also a consideration of your willingness and your ability and your interest in the subject of that committee. So my experience has been, having served now two complete terms and entering into my third, that you have nothing to worry about, that the mayor will accommodate and help you. And uh, none of my new colleagues need worry about this either, that if you find, if you're, if your work schedule changes and it means that you cannot attend a particular meeting, you can make that known and adjustments will be made. The, the process is flexible and fair. And for that reason, I've seen no purpose in debating this further and I will not be supporting the motion to appeal. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Uh, Alder Rommel. Thank you, Mayor. You mentioned, and let me state that I understand it's your prerogative to make appointments, but here we have a scheduling conflict and you'd offer it out to people, to alders. Could they then say, well, I could do that, but I need to get rid of this and do a little trading? I mean, is that the kind of thing that you would allow, you know, or would that something just be a, like a one-off, like somebody needs to take it? Just more a 30,000 foot question, thank you. Yeah, Alder Rommel, I think, um, as you know, we certainly have had instances in the past where people swapped committees um, because of whatever conflict or interest or whatever they, whatever reason they had. And um, generally, I would be fine with that. Um, I think what we saw in this round of appointments was that when we tried to undo one thing, many other things cascaded after that, and it became pretty complicated. Um, so I think it would be more straightforward if we could find somebody to just take the appointment in question. And, and my intention has been, to, in fact, there are two alders that have notified me that there are um, appointments that they are not able or they do not wish to continue to take. Um, my intention has been to look at 
the array of conflicts and to ask those of you who do not have conflicts with those two committees if you would be willing to serve. I also was hoping to cross that to see if anybody had asked for those committees so that we could offer it to those people first. Um, that's why I've been waiting for Lila to be back because she has all that information. Um, but yes, if somebody says, I'm very actually interested in that, but I would have to get rid of this other committee, we could go down the chain um, and try and make it work. Uh, Alder Latimer Burris. Yeah, I just um, want to, yeah, I love um, Alder Bennett's idea of the uh, executive committee taking a look at that. And just to, to be totally clear, it's not just uh, my, I don't want the committee or I don't like it. it I, I was scheduled without asking in my personal schedule and it affects my work. So that I think we should have some consideration as council members of what we're able to do outside of this job, given that it is not a full-time, full-paying job. Alder Conklin. Roll call, please. Uh, roll call has been requested. And Alder, you are the last Alder in the queue. Um, so the question is appealing the chair's ruling that the motion to reconsider is not in order. Um, all those in favor of overturning the chair's ruling, aye. All those opposed to overturning the chair's ruling, no. As your name is called, and the clerk will please call the roll. Thank you. Alder Conklin. No. Alder Conklin, no. Alder Curry. No. Alder Curry, no. Alder Duncan. No. Alder Duncan, no. Alder Evers. No. Alder Evers, no. Alder Field. No. Alder Field, no. Alder Figueroa Cole. No. Alder Figueroa Cole, no. All go oh, sorry, Alder Govern Derajan. Rajan, no. Alder Knox. Yes. Alder Knox, yes. Alder Letterman Burris. Yes. Alder Letterman Burris, yes. Alder Madison. No. Alder Madison, no. Alder Martinez Rutherford. No. Alder Martinez Rutherford, no. Alder Miadze. Alder Miadze, no. Alder Rummel. No. Alder Rummel, no. Alder Slack. Alder Slack, abstain. Alder Tischler. Yes. Alder Tischler, aye. Alder Ververe. No. Alder Ververe, no. Alder Vitiver. Alder Vitiver, no. Alder Bennett? No. Alder Bennett, no. With three ayes, 14 noes, one abstention. With three ayes, the motion fails, and the motion to reconsider is not in order. Are there any other announcements or introductions of items from the floor? Seeing none, Alder Conklin, it's your turn. Happy birthday, President Curry. And I move a motion for adjournment. Is there a second? second. Moved and seconded to adjourn. Uh, Alder Curry seconded. Is there any objection to recording unanimous vote in favor of adjournment? Seeing no objection, we are adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>